Hello and welcome to State of the Union. I'm Stefan Grobe in Brussels. When Hungarian Prime Minister Viktor Orban traveled to Russia and China on a self-assigned peace mission recently, he should have known that he would risk a backlash among his colleagues in the European Council. And so it happened. This week was payback time. At the Foreign Affairs Council, the EU's top diplomat delivered a blistering rebuke against Orban and accused the newly minted Rotating Council president of disloyalty. Borrell confirmed the next informal foreign minister's meeting to be held in Brussels, effectively kicking a previously planned meeting in Budapest off the agenda. We have to send a signal, even if it is a symbolic signal, that being against the foreign policy of the European Union and disqualifying the policy of the European Union as the party of war has to have some consequences. Well, formal consequences. Whether the Hungarian government will use the summer weeks to contemplate about maybe a different approach remains to be seen. I'd be surprised. To something more meaningful now. At the 25th International AIDS Conference in Munich this week, researchers, medics and politicians were trying to find ways to cure the epidemic. Around 40 million people worldwide are still living with the disease. An awful number despite all the medical progress that has been made over the decades. While AIDS has pretty much dropped off the radar in wealthy countries, the fight continues in many of the world's poorer parts. A fight that needs not only money and research, but also empathy. One person dies of AIDS every minute. One person every minute. That is something we must change. Our common goal is to end the AIDS epidemic by 2030. We need more research, better prevention, people-centered information and thorough testing. But what we really have to keep working on is the fight against discrimination and stigma. Speaking of a danger to health, the European Cockpit Association of Commercial Pilots launched an ad campaign in Brussels airport bathrooms this week to raise awareness of what they believe to be a massive safety risk. A proposal by aircraft manufacturers and airlines to have one pilot at the controls only, and not two. The idea has sparked massive resistance among pilots and is currently being evaluated by the European Aviation Safety Agency. For more details, I'm now joined by Tanja Harter, Technical Affairs Director at the European Cockpit Association. Welcome to the program. Thanks for having us. So let me get straight to the point. Why do we need two pilots on an airplane? Two pilots on an airplane um, are there for a reason. We do have uh, all the systems, everything on an aircraft at least twice. Um, that includes the pilots. Um, pilots have uh, very distinctive roles. They um, uh, work together very closely, um, communicate all the time. And that's how they solve problems and operate the flight. Um, so it's always two that are doing this and uh, are uh, thinking about what's, uh, what's ahead and uh, what, what the issues are. The ECA, your organization, as well as thousands of pilots worldwide are advocating against the extended minimum crew operations for quite some time now. Why is it obviously so difficult to convince the industry? Apparently, it is a very um, tempting uh, issue for uh, various reasons. One might be a cost-cutting uh, cost exercise. The other might be um, the issue of um, presumed or perceived pilot shortage. Um, all of these issues are coming our way and are uh, used for a reason. What we haven't heard is a, a really uh, pressing safety issue. We know that aircraft manufacturers and airlines are the ones who are pushing for flights with one pilot. How will the aviation authorities and regulatory bodies react? Well, Airbus, as one of the manufacturers, um, apparently driven by their customers, the operators, has uh, placed a request for certification of such an aircraft to the European regulator. And uh, they are looking into the issue and um, the certification process is underway. 
and on top of that, uh, uh, accompanying to that, they will start uh, room making, accompanying the whole thing, uh, all the operational side of the house. Um, as far as we know, this fall. So the call for experts has been out and we are waiting for the room making to start, but it is uh, definitely the plan. So when can we expect this issue to be settled once and for all? Well, that is a, that is a very good question. Um, uh, the the rulemaking is supposed to start in uh, uh, in the fall. Um, if you look at the European Plan for Aviation Safety, which is the timeline we are working with, they want to uh, put it into operation as soon as 2027. All right, we'll be monitoring this closely. Tanya Harter there from the European Cockpit Association. Thank you so much for your insights today. Thank you very much um, for having us. It might be necessary these days to tell pilots about a stunning phenomenon in Cyprus. There, the small community of Messana has been swarmed by tens of thousands of migrating swallows. The birds are resting on utility poles and high voltage lines. Why the swallows gather there only between 6 and 8 in the morning and then scatter is a mystery. They repeat this process religiously for two summer months until they fly to Africa in early September. According to experts, the birds relate to each other and begin travel plans. It might also be a way of organizing their large community. No one knows for certain. Local lore has it that it brings bad luck to those who try to anger the birds. Someone should really tell the pilots. That's it for this edition. I'm Stefan Grober. Thank you for watching. Have an excellent week.